Hello, uh, welcome back to the course on Analyzing or Processing for Music Applications. In this uh, Transformations Week, we are talking about how the spectral modeling strategies uh, that uh, we have been presenting throughout the course can be used for transforming sounds. And in these programming lectures, uh, we are actually trying to understand those transformations from a programming perspective by actually looking at the code of the SMS tools and uh, trying to understand and use uh, these uh, transformation uh, possibilities. So we are actually uh, going through this block diagram. This is the block diagram of the analysis synthesis of the sinusoidal model. And what we're doing now is from the output of the sinusoidal model, by just taking the amplitude and frequencies of the sinusoid, we are applying some transformations to them and then resynthesizing uh, the sound. And if you notice here, the phase information of the analysis is not being used. Uh, most of the transformations require to regenerate the phases because we are changing time or we are changing the frequency and therefore it affects the phase. So uh, the original phases are not used anymore and we are regenerating the phases. And first I want to uh, look at this issue and see how relevant it is to not preserve the phases of the original sound. So I wrote uh, this little script in which I analyze a sound, a piano sound, using the sinusoidal model, and I do analysis and synthesis. Okay, so first I have uh, all the packages that need to be imported, then uh, I have all these uh, parameters for the analysis that uh, are needed, the window, uh, window size, FFT size, etc., etc. And then, well, I read the file, I get a window that I need, a humming window in this case, and I call the analysis uh, function of the sinusoidal model uh, file. Okay? And it returns frequencies, magnitudes, and phases. Now I want to call the synthesis of that. In fact, let's use everything. So let's use the, the frequencies, the magnitudes, and the phases of uh, the analysis and let's generate the sound. Okay, so let's save this and let's uh, run this uh, file. Okay, so um, now it has executed everything and let's plot first the input sound X and uh, we can plot on top of it the output sound Y. Okay, they're very close and in fact if you listen to them also clearly they should be quite close. So if we just type the input sound from that, let's move this here, from uh, the piano. Okay, and let's listen to that. And now we can play the resynthesized sound, so the test2.waf that I created. Okay, they're quite similar. The attacks are a little bit uh, not ideal. But now let's zoom into uh, one fragment of this. Okay, for example, this region here. And let's take a tiny version of it, a tiny section. So clearly they are very similar. They are not identical. Well, the blue is the original and the green is the synthesized. The synthesized has lost some aspect of it, but they look uh, very close. They are uh, a little bit different in the high frequencies in the, in the contours. Okay, now let's uh, do the synthesis. But instead of using the original faces, let's pass an array, an empty array. And this is the condition that then the synthesis will recreate these faces, and we're going to see that uh, next. But let's first, let's, let's just run this. Let's run it again. Uh, okay, let's run this file. And now we can do the same thing. We can just first plot the input sound. Then we can plot the output sound, 
already we can see that they are different and of course we can play it we can for example play the the sound that was generated basically looks identical uh, than it sounds identical than the synthesized sound with faces but if we look at the faces if we look at the shape of the waveform which are going to be the face information uh, we zoom in into a tiny portion of it and maybe a little bit more okay clearly the shapes of the waveforms are very different the input and output uh, shapes are very different that means that the phase is quite different they all preserve a phase continuity but the phase is different okay so basically in the synthesize now we have generated the phases let's go to the sign model file in where uh, the synthesize is performed so in the in the sinusoidal model synthesis here okay in this function that where it passes it accepts the the frequency maximum phases and it calls uh, the synthesis okay and then in the main loop we can see that there is some lines to uh, take care of these phase issues basically if the input parameter if the t phase parameter exists so it means that there is an array that is bigger than zero it will use uh, as the synthesis phase this phase otherwise it uh, generates a phase using this uh, line okay what does this does is starts from an initialized phase that is initialized uh, before here it's initialized as random phases the first time through and every time after that it increments the previous phase by uh, let's say the frequency the new frequency so it uh, takes uh, the frequency that has to be synthesized and using the hop size it uh, computes basically the phase that uh, the new uh, frame uh, should have so it does phase continuity but without uh, measuring or using the uh, analysis phases okay and this is what results into this uh, shape that we saw here okay uh, now uh, out of these uh, the sinusoidal transformation so this is the file what implements uh, the different transformations on the sinusoidal representation and basically there are two types the time scaling ones and the frequency scaling ones the time scaling is very simple it accepts frequencies and magnitudes so again no phase uh, is uh, here and what it does is basically it creates frames in between so the core part of this uh, function which is this it basically it keeps creating a new matrix a new array of frequencies and magnitudes and it uh, adds uh, interpolated uh, frames in between it actually does not interpolate it just simply repeats or jumps uh, actual frames so that's the way that we can create a much longer set of uh, frames so the frame rate is exactly the same and it keeps adding or deleting frames in order to make it longer or shorter the sound and for the frequency scaling is uh, simpler it uh, basically just takes the frequencies okay the every at every frame and uh, the frequency scaling can vary in time the same thing that the time scaling was uh, varying in time and now it will uh, multiply every single frequency value of all the the sinusoids of a particular frame by this scaling factor at that particular frame and that's basically all uh, it does then we have uh, the sign transformations uh, function that actually calls the analysis and transformation and synthesis and displays the the results and this is the file that is used from the uh, graphical interface so in here we have a function that performs the analysis and has some default parameters and it does just the standard analysis that we have seen but it plots intermediate uh, data and then there is this file transformation and synthesis that accepts the analysis parameters that uh, we have obtained without the phases 
and then it performs these transformations that we just mentioned, the frequency scaling from a given array of uh, scaling uh, factors, and then it has the time scaling that performs the uh, time scaling uh, operations. And then, of course, it does the, the synthesis and it writes the file. So let's call this. Okay, so it plots two uh, figures. It plots the figure of the analysis in which we see the intermediate data and the resynthesize. And it plots the modified version in which the sinusoids have been uh, scaled, both in frequency, so we see here some clear transformations, and in time in which uh, the duration has changed. And that's, uh, that's all. So basically, uh, this was an explanation of uh, the code of the uh, within SMS tools that performs uh, sinusoidal transformations. Uh, these uh, sinusoidal uh, transformations can be quite powerful uh, because we have quite a bit of flexibility and we can do some interesting uh, time stretching and uh, frequency uh, shifting or transposition operations uh, that uh, sound very nice. So next uh, lecture we will uh, continue in presenting uh, the possibilities of another uh, transformation uh, and another model. Uh, in this case it's going to be the harmonic plus stochastic model and we'll be talking about the morphing that we already have seen in the, in the demonstrations but we're actually going to try to understand uh, the code of it. So thank you very much and I see you next class.